Hey guys, what's up? JWisp here and welcome to episode 11 of the Minecraft Survival Let's Play. Here we are back in our amazing world. In the last episode, we successfully defeated the Wither. With my method, it literally took us like 30 seconds and we barely took any damage. And we got ourselves a beacon. And so now that we have the beacon, what I want to do is actually be able to create a full beacon. And to do that, we'll need lots of blocks, either, you know, any type of ore block. And I think the best way to do that is to use iron blocks, because today I want to show you guys how to make an iron golem farm. Now in the past, I've made small iron golem farms, I've made giant ones, I've made tons of different iron golem farms, but the one I recently built in my hardcore world last series is my favorite, because it's super simple to make, and it gets me tons of iron. So I'll show you guys how to make that. But first, I just want to give you guys a quick update. For those of you that don't follow my social media accounts, or my Discord, which are in the description if you guys want to. I just want to give a quick explanation. I usually don't like doing personal stuff in videos. Um, but a lot of people have been curious and asking me why my uploads have been kind of weird. For the past few years, I've uploaded almost every single day, if not every other day. I usually have four or five videos a week. Um, but lately, I've been having like one or two videos a week. And honestly, it's just because... Recently, you know, this is my first semester of college and things in the world with everything going on are kind of crazy I'm just inside a lot and honestly, it's just hard on me having online classes and working online too And just being in my house all day So I try to escape go to the gym But I also have to try to you know stay safe and not get sick for my family with the upcoming holidays however, I'm recording this around November 20th and the first week of December, I have all my college finals, so then after that, I'll have about a month and a half break, which I will totally grind out videos with no classes distracting me, and since I won't really be able to visit people since I have to stay safe for the holidays, I'm pretty much just going to be playing Minecraft the entire time, so I'll have more regular uploads coming soon. I'm super excited for that, but because of everything that's been going on, I just haven't been, I guess, in the best mental state, if that makes sense. Uh, so for all you guys sticking around and uh, kind of being understanding of this, I really do appreciate it. But anyways, enough with the sad story, let's get into the video. So I'm actually going to show you guys two separate Iron Golem farm designs. The first one I'm going to show you right now is a very simple, tiny design that is very good when you're just starting the game. That's the one I'm going to build now, and then probably in a few episodes or later on, once I have some more materials, I'll build the bigger iron farm. However, if you want to build the bigger iron farm now, I will link it down below just in case you want that. But to build this, you obviously need a pretty flat area, so I flattened out this area a little go bit ago, and I'll be using this. And besides that here's what you'll need you'll need a little bit over a stack of any building block I just have a stack and a half here 32 glass this is optional I just use the glass because I like to be able to see what my villagers are doing however you don't need glass five beds it doesn't matter what color I just have three white beds and only two red beds because that's the wool I had available I had the two red beds from the village and the white beds I just made myself you need three hoppers a chest 48 walls of any kind you only need four signs however i have 16 here just because i grabbed a stack and then one water bucket and one lava bucket now obviously besides that you'll need villagers now if you have access to eggs use eggs however just over here i have my villager breeder now we'll need five villagers in total however you only need two you can put two in our little chamber and eventually they'll breed now there's going to be many ways to get our villagers in there there's our villager breeder we have a few babies already uh we can either use a boat system to use a boat to carry them over or you can use a mine cart or you can just get lucky and hope they walk in there on their own um but i'll probably use the mine cart and or boat system and i'll show you guys how to do that later on but anyways let's start this build it shouldn't take long and hopefully you guys can follow along all right so to start off we're gonna give ourselves some room and build up one two three four five six seven eight blocks once we're up here on the eighth block just go out two blocks in each direction and fill in the square this will give us a nice five by five platform to work with after that it's time to place our beds place the first one like this the second one like this and then the last three will go right on top so all the beds will be looking like this once you have all the beds placed you can fill out this layer around the beds with just your normal layer of blocks after you've done that you can take your glass and do a two high layer all along this entire square 
Now, once you have this completed, we're gonna get our villagers in here. Again, we'll need five total, so if you wanna get all five in here right now, you can, but you only need two. After you put two in there, you can just give them some carrots or some bread and they'll breed on their own. I'm gonna do it my own method, but you can go on Google and there's plenty of ways you can look up on how to transport villagers. 2,000 years later. All right, so I took some time and set up a system. Uh, luckily, I have a lot of rails from the abandoned mine shafts I found. But what I did was I just made this little corridor next to my villager breeder. I let a villager in, waited for him to get on the rail, placed a minecart under him, and then I can push him, and he's on his way to the farm. So let's follow him a little bit. Let's go. Hopefully this works all the way. I'm not sure if I put enough powered rails. Oh yeah, it looks like I'm good. So I pretty much just have this contraption here. A giant, uh, <laughs> I don't even know what to call it. It's just a fun little roller coaster that the villager can take, and then bam. Looks like I landed right on top of him, look at that. And then we can just break these minecarts and uh, get out of here. I'm gonna need to be careful, I might need to break a bed to actually get out of there. But there we go, I'm gonna do this with ooh, with my other villagers and uh, soon we'll have enough villagers in this farm. Okay, so we got the five villagers in here and I broke a little bit of the uh, little highway system I built <laughs> just to give myself some room. But once they're all in here, we can place our chest and then place the three hoppers going into the chest of the third one, just place it going into either of the hoppers. And then we're gonna fill this entire layer up with our building block of choice, just to completely fill it in. Up here is where the actual iron golems will spawn and then eventually die. So after that, we're gonna take our wall and build it three blocks high along this entire platform. Now it's time for the water and lava. Place one sign here, one sign there, one sign there and then one sign there. What we can now do is place our lava there like that. It won't flow anywhere else. And then I'm just gonna use some of the cobblestone from before and build up to get on top of here. And we can place our water down there. So now the iron golems will spawn up here and they'll get pushed right there where only their head will burn so that the iron golems will still die but their drops will land safely down below. So after that, the farm's finished. The reason I waited for nighttime here is because the villagers have to at least use their beds once, and then the next day, during daytime, the iron golems will start to spawn. Now, the only downside with this farm is iron golems will only spawn during the day. But I guess it's also a plus because we didn't need to use a zombie and waste a name tag making this farm. However, what you can do is simply right under this farm, create a sort of AFK, uh, permanent daytime farm. What that pretty much entails is a bed and water system where you set up an auto clicker to constantly click on the bed so that you are constantly sleeping and constantly making it daytime so you can AFK. But once it's daytime here, we should get some iron golems start to spawn and the farm will start to work. So actually for me, the second it turned daytime, I did see one iron golem spawn. I actually didn't see the golem itself spawn, but I saw uh, little burn particles and I could hear it dying. So what I'm going to do just for this Minecraft day, um, I'm going to wait around here, just AFK, see how much iron I get. Once it becomes nighttime, I'll, uh, I'll sleep really fast to make a day again. And we can see how much iron I get in one Minecraft day. All right, it's been a little over one Minecraft day. I waited that entire day, slept, made it daytime again, and then waited a little bit. I also built this little uh, contraption to get up to the chest. There was a decent amount of uh, iron golems though. I think I saw two or three burn, and that was just while I was looking at my computer. Most of the time I was just scrolling through TikTok, but <laughs> let's check it out. Let's see how much we have. I really don't know what to expect. From a small farm like this, we shouldn't have too much iron, but we should still get a decent amount and Okay, 10 poppies and 39 iron ingots. I'm good with that. I mean, hey, that's still a pretty decent amount just from a little over one Minecraft day and night. So, I don't know. I think that's pretty good. If we spent, you know, hours AFKing here, like AFKing overnight, which I'll probably do with this farm, we'll probably get stacks and stacks of iron. So I might have to... Oh, <laughs> there's another iron burning up there. Another iron golem. Okay. This farm is working a lot better than I thought, actually, than I originally anticipated. This farm seems to be working very well, so let's wait for this guy to burn. See what we get. Okay, two poppies and an iron ingot. I mean, hey, I'm pretty good with that. I think that's a pretty good rate so far. So I know it works for sure. I mean, I can see it happening before my eyes. So I'll probably, before the next video, spend a good, you know, couple hours AFKing. And we can hopefully get lots of iron ready for our farm. Now, I think my villagers, when I checked and broke the little, uh, roller coaster I built. My villagers are doing fine without those villagers and they're starting to breed again and oh 
Okay, we have an Iron Golem here. Sometimes when you have so many villagers in one area, Iron Golems can just start to spawn naturally. The reason I built that farm so far away, though, is because I didn't want my villager breeder or my actual village interfering with the spawn of Iron Golems. If you have enough villagers in one spot, Iron Golems will spawn, as you can see right there with that uh, villager breeder. I actually didn't make that Iron Golem. He just kind of spawned on his own, but he'll probably die. But hopefully... If I AFK for a few hours, we'll get some iron, and uh, with a few AFKing sessions, we should hopefully have enough iron to make like 140 or 60 something iron blocks so that we can make the full beacon. So I think this is a great step towards this. That farm was super easy to make. It really didn't require a lot of resources at all. The most expensive part of it is probably two villagers, which you can easily get if you're near a village, or make a villager breeder, or just a... Uh, Trans transform a few zombie villagers. It's not too hard. So I definitely recommend everyone makes that farm because I don't know, it was super easy and it's actually spawning a lot more iron golems than I thought. When I've made tiny iron golem farms in the past, they usually don't have good spawn rates, but this one I was literally just sitting at the farm and I could see iron golems spawning. So I definitely think that this is a farm worth making. Well, anyways, guys, that's going to be all for this episode. I really hope you did find it useful. I, you know, the reason I make this series is to help people out. And so hopefully this farm design will really help you guys out. I'm curious. I've just been sitting here. I haven't been that long since uh, I left. I just started this little cut right after I ended there. So I want to see if any more iron golems have spawned since. I know you have to be relatively close to this farm for it to work, but I don't think you have to be right next to it. I'm sure if I'm just a few chunks away and it's in loading distance, it can work. I just want to see if there's any more iron. Maybe like one or two more golems. Oh, okay. looks like we probably got one or two more actually. And there's another one. <laughs> okay, this farm's like... I'm just surprised at how well this farm's working. Maybe with 1.16.4, there's some new iron golem spawning mechanics. I know in my hardcore world, I was stunned at how many iron golems were spawning from my villager breeder. It was kind of crazy, but hey, I'm not going to complain. I'm still fine with that. This farm's working really well. But like I said, that's going to be all for this one. I really hope you guys enjoyed and uh, could hopefully get some good use out of this farm. I'll leave some links down below of inspiration for this farm, as well as links to other farms I've built. And also, thank you guys. Oh my god, we have another Iron Golem here. He wasn't here like two seconds ago when I was just over here. I don't know what's happening. All these Iron Golems are spawning now. But I hope you guys enjoyed. And like I said earlier in the episode, I really do appreciate the continuous support on this series, even with everything going on right now. So anyways, this is Jay Wisp, and I will see you guys all in the next one.